Okay, good morning, Grade 11s. You guys saw the trailer, so you know that your man's videos are here. And today's one is on um, reduction formula. Okay, so with this stuff, the most important question, as it was with some of the other stuff we've done as well, I mean, you've heard me say it before, is which quadrant? Okay, that's like the most important question in your life right now, is which quadrant? Okay. This is a seriously chilled section, so you should get it very quickly. Um, okay, so what they basically do is they give you a sum that looks like this. So it says three cars, 180 plus X, blah, blah, blah. So there's like extra numbers in these brackets, which we do not want. We want to simplify these things. So what's going to happen is you're going to figure out where this 180 plus X is. Then decide if cos or sine or tan or whatever they give you is positive or negative. Then you'll change it to that sign and remove the 180 so you'll only be left with an x. Okay, let me show you visually then it might make more sense. Okay, so this is 3 times, so the 3 is not going to go anywhere. But we're looking at cos 180 plus x. So uh, you need to go and sort of draw this for yourself at the beginning of the exam. Um, it does make sense though. Um, if you think about it, do you guys remember when I was doing, um, using a sketch and I told you that you always draw up and down to the x-axis. Remember we did this and I said it kind of forms like a little bit, bit of a bow tie. Okay, so the angle with trig that we're always interested in is the one that it forms with the line to the x-axis. That one and that one. Okay, so if you think about it, if this is theta, so let's say for example, that's theta okay the same angle would be formed on this side okay and this would be 180 minus theta to get you up, if you understand what i'm saying okay because this is a 180 degree line it's a straight line so you could minus theta to get this angle then this whole angle would be yeah 180 minus theta same thing over here if you had this over here and this is theta to get back to this or to get from here all the way there it would be theta plus 180 because this is a 180 degree line. So you'd be starting here, then you'd plus 180. And then it sort of works the same over here. This would be 360 because remember this is 0 to 360. Minus theta would get you all the way around that full angle that we want. Okay. Um, if you guys want, I'll make another video explaining that nicely because I feel like I'm rushing because I'm really excited to do this question. Okay. So, um... Yeah, once you've drawn your diagram and you go fill in the important things, so 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, 360 minus theta, you'll now be able to see where it is. Okay, so 180 plus theta is in which quadrant? Clearly, it is in the third quadrant. There's 180 plus theta. So you're going to ask yourself, what is cos in the third quadrant? It is negative. So now, I'm just going to make a bracket so we don't get confused. That's negative cos. Sorry for bumping the camera. Um, negative cos. And now you're going to remove the 180, so you'll just have an x. Be with me. Okay, so that one's that done. Then the next one is sine 360 minus x. Okay, so you're going to ask yourself, and by the way, um, x you guys know is just, it's like another letter for the angle. So it's the same as using theta. Okay, so 360 minus x is over here in the fourth quadrant. What is sine in the fourth quadrant? This one's cos, so sine must be negative sine. And then instead of um, 360 minus x, you're just going to make it an x. So basically the number and the sine disappears. Okay, all over. Alright, um, over here this is sine of 360 plus x. So... Okay, this one, it's not really on the drawing, but if you think about it, here's 360. Now, this direction is positive, and that direction is negative. Okay, so 360 plus x takes me to my first quadrant. What is sine in your first quadrant? Well, everything is positive in first quadrant, so this would just be sine of x. Okay, now, last one is 180 minus theta. Where's 180 minus theta? Over here in the second quadrant. So that makes cos negative because sine is positive there. So it's negative cos 
L, X, K. Now you get to the fun part where you just get to cancel stuff out. So just be careful of your signs. Um, if you look over here, cos will cancel with cos. Sign will cancel with sign. These two negatives will just make a positive, but you're left with another negative. So your whole answer is going to be negative. We cancelled out everything except for the 3, so the answer is negative 3. Bear in mind if the 3 was le left at the bottom and not at the top, the answer would be 1 over 3. Just careful with those fractions. Okay. Um, Alright, so next one, just because there's a square, it doesn't make a difference. It just means once you've decided if sign is positive or negative, it becomes positive or negative sine squared. So you just don't lose the square. Okay, so 180 plus x is where? It is in the third quadrant. What is sine there? Negative. So this is negative sine squared x. Are you with me? Okay, then this one over here, cos squared of 180 minus x. 180 minus x is in the second quadrant. Here, cos is negative. Um, if I were, and by the way, just be careful, if this already was a negative, now you're making cos negative, it would become a positive, because two negatives make a positive. But over here, this is a positive. So if cos becomes a negative, a positive and a negative will make a negative. So this will become a negative. Alright, then, um, okay, so cos squared 180 minus x, we said was negative, so now it just becomes cos squared Okay, we've already changed the sign there. Alright, all over. Tan of 180 minus theta. 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant. Here, tan is negative. Negative tan x. Okay, 360 minus is in the fourth quadrant. What is tan there? Tan is, I mean, what is cos there? Sorry, cos is positive. So this becomes cos of x. Okay, um, you can simplify this further if you kind of have a look at the identities that we've done. Um, if you look at the top, if you want to take out a negative, and then this will become negative bracket sine squared plus cos squared, that'll be negative 1. Um, the bottom here, you can change tan to sine over cos. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do that. Like I basically wanted to teach you this part, but it's good practice. So if I take out the negative here, I get negative sine squared x plus cos squared x. See, you should kind of recognize that combination of sine squared and cos squared. You should recognize that tan can be changed to sine x over cos x. And this is times by cos x. And by the way, it's a negative. Okay, so these two negatives can actually cancel. The whole thing will become a positive. The top is just going to become 1. These two causes can cancel, and you're left with 1 over sine x. Okay, that simplifies really nicely. Um, the important thing I want you to take note of is how to do these reduction formulas. Okay, one more example, and then I will make the next video. Cool. Example 3. Um, we are looking... Okay, let me get this so that you guys can see. Sorry. Alright. Remember... I said to you that this direction is negative. So if you look here, this negative x, it's the same as saying 0 minus x, right? So it's 0 minus x, which will take us to the fourth quadrant. So if you see a negative x, just understand it's just going this way. So now you're here in this little quadrant over here. So your sign over here is going to be negative. Anyway, so this is a 1. And then we said that sign here is negative. So it becomes negative sine x over okay cos um, at 180 minus x is here so cos is negative so this becomes negative cos squared x simple enough right okay cool um let me do the next video it's also for today it's going to be on co-ratios